for people who may not be uh, strong sp fans of sports, strong football uh, fans, you know, avid football fans, uh, The One and Only is a book that is uh, uh, one in which non-football fans will appreciate and enjoy. Again, I've, as, I've, as I've said, it's about a human being, about a person and his feelings and what he went through, both good and bad. But it's also one of love and inspiration. Chick Harley uh, could have married. He could have had a family. He could have experienced uh, all of life's joys that uh, a lot of people, most people do. And yet it wasn't, it, it wasn't meant to be for him. And uh, that alone is without any uh, background or any uh, play, any uh, background in football, uh, without the, uh, what he experienced in football, that alone is a tragedy, that, what he went through. And yet he came out of it uh, as best as he could. Uh, the woman he was going to marry, she went on and married a, a good friend of Chick's, and they remained friends for the rest of their lives. She went on to have a family, and uh, he went on to uh, uh, deal with the tragedy of mental illness. And yet all that time he had around him people and family and friends who uh, stayed loyal to him and loved him and regarded him as a friend and as a uh, uh, figure of uh, inspiration for the rest of his life and the rest of their lives. The story of Chick Harley is a story, uh, again, of, uh, of a human being and how he uh, was at one point in his life at the pinnacle of, uh, of, of adulation and ad admiration as a sports figure, but that how, with time, he and, and the onset of uh, mental illness, uh, that disappeared, and yet it didn't disappear completely. Um, football in America, college football in America, was uh, at that time was an age of innocence. Um, people and players competed and played in college football and football for the purest of reasons. They competed and they played for the pure enjoyment of the game and the thrill of winning and the thrill of participation. And the thrill of participating on behalf of a cause, and that cause was the school and friends and family. What's evolved in, with football, professional football, and to a degree college football, is that uh, money and profit has taken over a lot of it. It doesn't diminish the great things that, are, that, that happen on football fields in, in the present day uh, because there are a lot of great things that happen nowadays. The athletes are phenomenal. But the motivation and the, um, uh, what's behind a lot of it is not just the pure aspects, but the pro aspects of profitability and of money and of, you know, trying to be able to afford, uh, I don't know, things of material, let's say, and to uh, improve the bottom line rather than just uh, improving the sense of school and community. So that's how, that's how I believe it has changed. Of course, physically it's changed tremendously. You've got players now, uh, you know, 300 pounds is the norm many players. Back then, no players weighed 300 pounds. Uh, back then, uh, they wore leather helmets without, a face, without face masks. They wore a, a minimum am amount of uh, padding because pa that type of padding wasn't needed. Players didn't hurl themselves at one another to, to tackle. Uh, it wasn't brute force. It was grace and speed and um, Players tackled the way they're supposed to tackle. They wrapped their arms around the opposing player's legs and tackled them. They didn't ram into them. They weren't human ramrods. So that's how, that's how it's changed in, in that respect.